recorded live from Studio 12A in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. You're listening to the Josh and Friends Podcast. Hello! Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends Podcast. I am your host. My name is Josh. And this week's guest is someone I met over 20 years ago. 20 years. It was Y2K, and I just graduated from college and looking for work. And my buddy Kevin comes up and he's like, hey man, I have this friend who's hiring some people for this job. If you're interested, it's yours. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds amazing. What is it? What do they do? He's like, well, you'll be hauling concrete paver blocks and retaining walls all day for 10 hours. I'm like, sounds amazing. Let's do it. Where do I sign up? And that job was working for this guy. Not only is this person a super nice guy, but he's also one of the hardest working individuals that I've ever known. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome to the show the man behind the BC Pavers Empire and the biggest heterosexual fan of Madonna that I've ever met. He's my buddy and former boss, the one and only Mr. Brian Crooks. All right, Brian, welcome to the show, man. How you been? I've been good. I've been good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so where are you calling from? Where are, it looks like you're in a shack or something. Is that like a, are you in like a little shed out in the backyard or what? Yes, I oh, am. Oh, you really are. <laughs> I, I really am. This is my office. This is That's my awesome. COVID office now. So I am in a shed. Awesome. Um, yeah. Is it warm? Does it stay warm in there or do you have like a heater or what? I do. I insulated it. I heated it. Dang. Um, yeah, it's got the power and everything and. We get enough Wi-Fi signal out here for the computer, so it nice. actually, I actually like it. So yeah, nice. yeah, awesome. Any of the little pegs that you can hang things on and everything, and I do, yeah, pegboard. That's why <laughs> I, I had some leftover pegboard, so that's what I sheeted it with. That's awesome. <laughs> the goal is to turn it back into a shed. That is amazing. Yeah, because you're you're definitely a construction guy, like through and through. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for better or worse, I guess. Yeah. So how, how is Jennifer doing? Oh, Jen's doing good. She's doing really good. Good. What's she up to these days? Is she working? Does she work with the uh, BC Pavers Empire? Um, a little bit. Yeah. She does a few things for BC Pavers. She's technically an officer of the corporation. Ah, uh, okay. And she can sign checks and do all that fun stuff. Uh, but the day-to-day -day stuff, she, she doesn't do too much. She handles our uh, employee benefits. So basically our ah. retirement program. Gotcha. Gotcha. So right on, right on. So like, uh, I think the last time I saw you was at Ryan's wedding. Was, am I, am I, is that, is that even possible? Is that right? Or am I way off on that? No, we saw you at the, uh, Fiesta Bowl Phoenix when me and my wife and daughter. Oh yes. And yes. Jewel and Lee came down to watch the Huskies. In the yes. Fiesta Bowl. I think it was Whoa. Like three years ago. Pre COVID. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. And then we, Yep. Went out to eat and yeah, that was that was awesome. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, kind of did a tailgate I think before the game. How are your kids doing? How are your kids doing these days? They're doing good. They're doing really good. So good to hear. Good my to hear. oldest is uh, Kaylee. She is what is she? Fifteen now. She keeps reminding that is me crazy. That she's driving a year. Oh my god. <laughs> and yeah, we'll we'll see about that, but. <laughs> uh, she wow. keeps reminding me that, and my youngest now is going to be turning 11 in a month. Dude, that's so. crazy. I remember the first time I met them, we were at Ryan's wedding, and uh, she kept wanting to hear all the single ladies, that song, and she kept dancing in her little dress and everything. Like She kept yep. saying, like, Beyonce. And so <laughs> yep. Yep. It was, uh, it was cute back then. Yeah. Now... <laughs> <laughs> now uh oh gosh yeah, father of two girls uh -oh. it's, it's not cute anymore oh maybe. god <laughs> so, you're right it was cute i was like this was, is like one of the most adorable things i've ever seen she's like she's bouncing around in that little dress like all the single ladies like yeah so funny <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> oh yep. man oh she likes to dance <laughs> 
thing. <laughs> oh man, how's uh, how's Mini Crooks doing oh, these days? Gosh, he's doing pretty good. I actually I actually see him and hang out with him a lot more now than I used to. Oh yeah, we've been playing golf together a lot lately. Whoa. So over the last the well, last couple of years, I guess we try to get out every week and play golf. Now I have I have legit not seen him <laughs> probably since uh, that one job right before he went on on his mission. Yeah. And I, I think I remember uh, Vic saying like, "There's t- you know, there's time. There's time. You can still bail. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go." And he's like, uh, "I'm gone." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was yeah, awesome. No, that, those were. He talks about those days <laughs> when you guys. He talks about when you guys snuck him into the bar. Oh god. Down there. <laughs> when he was like. Oh, that that dude was crazy. He was Eighteen or nineteen, he was scared to death. Oh no, I I was scared to death. <laughs> Yeah, there's was, there was some uh, there's some crazy times down there, but um, but we'll we'll maybe get to, get to some of those there. So uh, so Brian, now I first met you through Kevin, good old yeah. Kevin McKinnon. Now yeah. you guys actually went to high school together, is that correct? We did, correct. And what high yeah. school was that? We went to Tahoma High School. Tahoma High School, which is in Maple Valley. Correct. Yeah. And that was back when Maple Valley was kind of like a small, quaint little town, right? It was. It was very small. And so. It's grown quite a bit since then, hasn't oh, it? Like- <laughs> yeah, I live in Maple Valley again, and it is way different. Yeah. It is- it's hard to describe how small that like place was before. but I remember when they put up the first stoplight. <laughs> that, was, that was something else at Four Corners. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And yeah. you... Uh, now, were you were you an athlete back in in uh, in high school? I think you said you played football or something like that, right? Did you play I football? Was. I I played a whole bunch of different sports. I played football, uh, I played basketball, and then I did track. Dang! Um, I also ran cross country after I tore my knee up. Oh, uh oh! <laughs> what year was that? Was that your what? Uh, my sophomore year, I uh, I hurt my knee the last game in my sophomore year in football we were running out the clock and i was blocking for the running back and i and he got tackled sideways into me and blew my knee oh god thanks for that visual yeah yikes oh god so then the next year i ran cross country instead um you know before (laughs) you ran cross country after blowing out your knee yeah yeah (laughs) sounds weird but okay basketball too so i actually came back played basketball in that same year my sophomore year i made it back oh gotcha okay so yeah because i well you can always tell like an athlete you know like you know our kind of like our big group of friends we're we're all pretty like decent athletes you know we're not division one athletes or anything like that but you can always tell like an athlete and i always remembered you from turkey bowl because you had (laughs) perfect form when you were tackling people and I would just like sit back and watch this guy. And I'm like, there's no way this guy did not play football. <laughs> I mean, and it didn't matter if it was like, it, you could be like Murr rolling down the, uh, the, the field. You're like, well, I'll just, uh, let up, uh, Brian, I'll take care of him. And like Brian, yeah. just like, just tackle him. Perfect form. Yeah. <laughs> did you, Unfortunately, I was, <laughs> I, I led our team in tackles sophomore year, oh. but unfortunately I played corner. Oh, so- Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, if that, that gives you an idea of how, how good our team was. Oh, that was sounds amazing. Of, there was a lot of running backs coming around the end. <laughs> wow. Yikes. Well, yeah. They, yeah. I mean, if you're going to have someone uh, that does the cleanup, yeah. leave it to uh, good old crooks over there. Maybe they had the same uh, ideas as I did. You know, like, yeah, maybe lit up a little bit. You know, there's always crooks that will save, uh, save the day over here. Yeah. But yeah. Now, so for those who aren't familiar with – your type of construction what does your company do and what do you guys specialize in so we do brick pavers and retaining walls for the most part um we don't do a whole lot of retaining walls currently um mostly doing brick pavers but basically brick paving that's on the ground horizontal uh we do all different types of paving so you got the uh, retaining walls out of your system, uh, and then you stopped when I left. Yeah, it se- well, it seems to go through cycles. <laughs> okay. So we'll go, you know, we've had some years where we've been doing way more walls and 
lot fewer pavers, but we're in a cycle right now for the last three, four years where it's been mostly, you know, mostly pavers. We'll get a couple walls here and there, but mostly pavers. Gotcha. Uh, and yeah. When did you officially start your company? I started in 1997. <laughs> that so is so I crazy. The, I was just finishing my junior year. I think it was in college. Dang. Uh, yeah, I remember yeah. when you were pretty uh, kind of like, you know, doing it out of the back of your truck, essentially. And yeah. uh, and I came on a couple of years after that. <laughs> yeah, you weren't too long after that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you know, good old Kevin, like, uh, hey, man, you looking for a job? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, hey, my buddy, uh, you know, whatever. I, I remember him yeah. talking about you in college when we were on the uh, the radio. He's like, hey, you want to go to Vegas with uh, my buddy Brian and I? And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. I remember those <laughs> trips. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. So now uh you prefer pavers to blacktop and stamp concrete. Is correct. that correct? Yes. <laughs> Why is yeah. that? I would say ninety nine percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> there there are some brutal paver jobs where oh. yeah, you, you know, maybe we should just pour concrete. Here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now you go, I know you used to explain this to me, but you used to like always talk about how you're like, Hey, look at Europe, man. <laughs> look at Europe. If, if something breaks or snaps, you don't have to, you know, you just, you just take out the paver and place it back in. And yeah. they've been there for how many years? Like hundreds of years, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. And yeah. they look nice. They do. Yeah. Even if they get old and ugly, the pavers still look nice. Yeah, they do. So I know my, my back, you know, my parents, uh, we, we did my parents yard yeah, and, <laughs> and it's all, you know, it's Washington. It's all like grown over with like, you know, moss and stuff like that. And it look, looks hella good. I'm like, oh, it looks so good. I mean, you yeah. could power wash that out and everything, but I, I don't know. It kind of looks good. I kind of like it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah. um, so do you remember which project that I started with you on? Oh gosh. It was um, a, it's a big one. You well, it must have been down at Lacey then. The Lacey power plant or the paver plant, yeah. right? Yeah, the paver plant. <laughs> That's right. I do remember now. I was thinking it might have been Kevin's, but I think that was when yeah. Lee started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so the paver plant, uh, they actually made pavers, right? Correct. Yeah, they did. I, I remember walking in that place. I'm like, dude, how many people in this plant are going to get cancer from just inhaling this shit all day? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, they have a lot more uh, OSHA controls on that stuff now than when we were doing <laughs> It was ridiculous. Stuff. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go inside and go to the bathroom. I'm going to hold my breath as I walk down this hall. Yeah, yeah. but so, and that was January of 2000. That was right after New Year's. That was uh, right after the big Y2K New Year's. Okay. It's pretty crazy. I just remember that job was so brutal at first because, I mean, half of that job, we didn't even have your famous machine. Uh, yeah. so how did you find out about this machine? This, this crazy, amazing machine that you, that you found out about this in like a book or something, some pamphlet that you saw from, uh, your dad's, uh, yeah, it was because, um, we didn't use the internet a whole lot back then. Um, <laughs> right. It was just pretty new. It was. So we actually, we got that contract to pave the paver plant cause they wanted to prove that you know, you could use pavers in an industrial setting. Oh. And so I kind of negotiated the contract to do it with them. And we started that job laying it by hand. <laughs> oh, I remember. And it was, <laughs> it was about, oh, I think it was about 10 acres. So if you can imagine putting down brick pavers for 10 acres, there was, I yeah. don't know, four, four or 5,000 pallets of pavers. <laughs> It was just um, never ending. It was just, just was pallets and pallets. Yeah. And so, you know, after, after a month or two of being out there laying it, I started kind of trying to think like, there's got to be a way to mechanize this, or there's got to be some way out there to do this faster. Cause I knew they had, you know, port jobs and bigger jobs and that they did. So I started right. kind of researching it and found, um, found some brochures that had a picture of a machine laying the port of Oakland in it. And so I started kind of researching or it might not have been the port of Oakland, it might've been another one, but anyway, started researching it, found the manufacturer, contacted them and got, you know, they, they shipped me a little, I thought it was pretty high tech then, but they shipped me like this mini DVD that I could put in my computer yeah, and watch a video of the machine. Whoa. 
you know? And so that's kind of how I saw that. And then started negotiating and so we, and then you, we got the machine to finish it. No, no. So you actually, did you fly out to Germany to get that machine? I didn't fly to Germany. They had a machine. Or did in, they, fl- they come out here? Yeah, they, they had a machine. In, I know there's uh, definitely in, Germans oh, involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the Germans, so they flew the Germans out to train us. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. So, so they actually had a machine in the States. They had one, I think it might've been at world of concrete, which is usually in like January or February it's yeah. during the winter. And I think that's where I went down and saw the machine at world of concrete in Vegas. Oh, wow. And, and then ended up buying it. And then, yeah, part of the part of the agreement for buying it, they send out someone to train you for a week. So they oh, send wow. one of the Germans out to come stay on the job with us and train us how to use it for a week. Talk about an investment, man. So, like, just to put this in perspective. So, Brian, how many pallets would we lay in a single day? I mean, just busting ass. I mean, do you remember? I can't remember how many it was, but... Well, I remember... <laughs> so... Kelly had the record for handling. <laughs> if you remember Kelly, yeah, Kelly was awesome. And I think it was like 40 or 42 pallets that he laid. So everyone yeah. kept, I think you were, did the paver card mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah. And you'd carry the pavers over to him and then he would lay them by hand. It's a machine, man. He was, he was a machine in itself. Yeah. And he, he was the fastest laying guy we had. And I think he laid about 40, 42 pallets in a day was about the fastest that we did and that's with everyone just keeping him feeded right um now how many can you lay in a day with a paver machine well with the paver machine (laughs) oh i think our best day we had was about 120 pallets (laughs) so like just think about like how much how fast that machine would pay off even if it's like you know really expensive machine you know, in the long run, you're going to be getting so much more accomplished. And then you could split your crews. Then you started splitting your crews and guys would be working on the yep. screening, the the sand and the, the rock and all that good stuff. And and yep. uh, you could actually have a, other guys doing other things and just doing everything so much faster. So, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of a, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting deal. And I mean, I guess you have to see the machine to to know what we're talking about. Maybe I'll post a, a picture of that machine so so people can get an idea of what that thing is. But it, it basically clamps the first layer. How many how many paver bricks are on one pallet w- with those design? It's uh it's about 80 or 90 square feet typically. So if you do it by the square foot, there's uh, usually eight layers and so it picks up an entire like top layer, the top layer of, you know, it clamps onto it. It lifts up that top layer and, and then you swing it around <laughs> and you, yep. and you drive it to wherever you want it to, you know, put the pavers down and you just bloop, plop it right down and boom off to get yep. the next one. And you just tap it in, tap, 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 tap. And yeah. Lee actually made a video of it that we have on, I think we even have a YouTube site. Oh really? <laughs> Shockingly. Yeah. I think it's the only thing on it. But <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, you can you can YouTube it. Oh, I'll YouTube that. I'll definitely have to check that Papers out. And mechanical paver laying or something like that, and it'll it should come up. Awesome. So, and it's Lee's driving the machine in that one. So awesome. Well, that was the big industrial job, and then uh, you know I did a lot of other jobs. You know, I, I loved working with. I was a Kelly guy. I was, I was I was big on working with Kelly. Kelly was like kind of like a kind of like a mini foreman. You know, he's like yeah. the knowledgeable like you know uh, guy that. Kind of like your right hand man before uh, before he went on to uh, greener pastures, um, but <laughs> but uh, there was this one time I don't know God I don't know if you were working on this job with me or who it was I cannot remember but we were almost done with this job it's getting late it's not worth it to come back the next day just get it done and we stayed a little bit late do you know where I'm going with this I do yeah I think I do <laughs> was, was I that do. was that you that was there. Yeah, I was there with you. I don't remember who else. I don't Dude, that was that was so us. crazy. I, we're, we're like, uh, and it's like literally just. I mean, the sun just went down. It's yep. we're up on the plateau, right? In the one of the uh, 
I think it was. Yeah, yeah. one of those new developments. I mean, these houses were not cheap. They're yeah. they're expensive houses. Big, and... Nice, big, custom, you know, <laughs> yeah. 5,000 square foot house. With... Right, right. And so basically, they're it's all framed and done and everything. They're just doing the inside, you know, painting or whatever they're doing in there. Yep. Uh, they had left. It's all locked up. And I see this flicker of light. I'm like, what is that? What is that? Do you guys see that? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I was like, that, that, what is that flicker? And I think, I, I think you like walked around. You're like, oh my God, the, the side of the house is on fire or something like that. And I was like, dude, we got to get inside. We got to get in here, man. <laughs> and you're like, uh, it's locked. Uh, and I'm like, oh, dude, we got we to gotta bust this door down. <laughs> we got to get in here. So I literally kicked in the door, busted in the door. And then I got to, I want to say it was like you and it could have been Vic at that time, right? I don't know if it was Vic yet, but I don't uh, remember. I don't know. One of, us, one of think, you guys. I, I grabbed the water bucket. Yeah. Because we had one of those big five gallon yes. water jugs. Yeah. And uh, just poured that thing out. Yeah. So I grabbed that and ran in after you kicked the door in and dumped it. It was a bucket of rags that spontaneously combusted. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. To stain all the woodwork and they just left all the rags in the bucket and it. I've never seen that before, ever. I mean, I know that it happens, but I'd never been witness to anything like that that's ever happened like that. But yeah, so we we went in, we we put out that fire. And then do you remember what happened after that? <laughs> oh, gosh. So the well, fire, remember we called the fire department. Yeah. And the I'm fire department came and they were asking uh, you and I, like, what, what was going, what was happening? And then, then the owner, then he came. <laughs> and the owner... I was standing uh, next to the guy telling him what happened. And he goes, you did this? You, you kicked in my door? And I go, yeah, we had to like put out the fuck. And he goes, he goes, I should have you guys pay for that door. And I was like, I was so angry, dude. I, I, I couldn't even, I had to walk away because I, I, I couldn't even imagine. I, I almost wanted, deep down, Brian, I wanted to go back in time to just like, eh, that sucks. That sucks that that, uh, that house is on fire. Well, I guess I'll just... Uh, Turn around and get my car and drive off. Yeah. Dude, I couldn't believe someone was angry at us putting out a fire. I'm like, we knocked down one of those, like, that's not even like a real door. It was like a, it yeah. was like, it, it was a, it was a real lock, but it was like one of those temp doors, you know, that. Yep. <laughs> so I, I, I kicked that in and he was angry at that. How yep. much, like, how much lumber? It's like a, one little thing of lumber, whatever. I don't know. That just always pissed me off. So. Oh. I agree. And that is why like all these kind of stories and working, doing that construction, all that for all these years, that is why I hate people now. (laughs) Oh, now. (laughs) I mean, it, it started growing back then, but these are all the reasons. Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember when that I just hate people period. Oh dude. When we were doing those jobs, when we were, when there were numerous like different construction things going on at the same time, those are the worst. We'd have to always sit there, work around these guys and you know whether it be the the gardener or the whatever whatever you call them what do, what do you call them? The, the landscaping guys or the uh or the uh the painters or the the guys that are just doing the the regular uh framing and stuff like that dude we're like sitting here always trying to work it, didn't you we did that one job with the uh, what was that one job that you did the street of dreams you remember that one <laughs> yeah. you were so pissed you're like dude yeah. never again yeah. never again I think we did it one time and uh, we got all our equipment stolen. <laughs> great. And yeah. It's a great, it's a great experience. Yeah. I think the guy, some guy showed up with a dump truck and then used our Bobcat to load up our pile of gravel in his <sighs> dump truck and then put our Bobcat on our trailer and stole the Bobcat trailer and our pile of gravel. <laughs> Jesus. Did you, Yeah, you guys found that Bobcat later, like, I don't know how much later, but you guys found that thing, right? Yeah, yeah, the police called, because we filed a report in that, and the police called maybe a month later, and it had been abandoned at an elementary school somewhere. The trailer <laughs> Took a joy ride with it. and Yeah, they needed to put some gravel somewhere <laughs> and just to, to use it, I guess. So. Wow, wow. Yeah. Do those things have, like, a, a key to each thing, or can you, are you, can you just actually just shove a screwdriver in it and start it up? So, most of the equipment back in the... Well, back in the day, I guess they still kind of do it that way now, but all the machines have the same key. 
So like oh, all of great. your Bobcat machines would have the same Bobcat key. <laughs> so if you had a Bobcat key, you could go start up any Bobcat machine. That's or like if you had a cat key. You could go start any cat machine. Dude, you know what's funny is my buddy uh, drove a Toyota Tacoma, like one of those old Toyota Tacomas from like the I don't know. It had to be like the early '80s or something, maybe the late '70s even. And I, I drove my Toyota Corolla, which was a 1976 Toyota Corolla, to work one time. I think this is it. We were working at UPS, and my buddy goes, hey, I'll wait outside for you. And, and I walk out. He's in my car, and he started it. He started my car. And he goes, hey, the key works. And I go, what do you mean the key works? <laughs> he goes, yeah, sometimes these old Toyotas, they, they work, uh, you know. In this. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, yeah, so I think it's always weird when, you know, aren't keys supposed to, like, uh, you know, be keys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They make them a little different. Now you can get lockout keypads. It's all kind of yeah. touch, you know, have keys anymore and all, it's just all funny. stuff, codes and yeah. <sighs> back in the day, yeah. If you had the Bobcat key, you could fire up any Bobcat. So Brian, I remember you were always one of the the coolest, one of the nicest bosses that I ever worked with. Uh almost uh almost too nice, uh sometimes back in the day. Like when uh, when people would like flat out lie about like, you know, how many hours they, I always would never do this. Cause I, I, it's just, uh, even though it'd be so easy to do to you, like, uh, you know, like, Hey, you're not there. You're not there to supervise us. You don't, you clearly don't have cameras on us. Like this is 2000 or, you know, like y- y- you could make up stuff, but like, you're like, uh, so what were your hours? I'm like, and I'd always give you like, you know, 0.75 <laughs> like hours. And you're, and then like, uh, the one guy I was working with, like, I, I think I remember his name, but I I don't want. I'm not gonna say it. Anyway, he's like he's like yeah, I had blah blah, and, and I'm like, How, wait a minute, he started after me every day and left earlier, and he says he has like three hours more. Than, he's like, oh boy, Ugh. Brent, how many times did you actually do a job or sign a contract to do a job where the client refused to pay for the services after the job was complete? Oh, it didn't happen very often. Oh, it would happen uh, a couple times when I was there. <laughs> Yeah. The one time, do you remember the one time when uh, we were working for that like Santa Claus dude and it was me, Vic and Kelly and uh, Vic and I afterwards, when we found out he wasn't going to, he was like, yeah, he's not going to pay. And we're like, Vic goes, are you fucking shitting me? And like, uh, Vic and I were like, are you kidding? And we're like, right, we're going to go, I got a bat. And he's like, I got a fucking gun. (laughs) I'm like, whoa, that escalated quickly. (laughs) But but uh, yeah, we were like, we we're gonna, and you're like, yeah, don't do that, don't do that. And I'm like, wow, man, like people could just do that. They could just not pay. Like, I mean, I guess you could take them to court, but then you, I think that's what you said. You're like, I mean, yeah, you could spend your all your time in court. Yeah, it, that's bullshit, I don't man. Remember that one in particular. Um, so we were working at this job, and it was like, I, I think it was like Wallingford or like what's the big Brit, the big bridge from uh, that, that heads like you know University of Washington's right on the right when you're heading over the bridge. Yeah, that's Montlake. Okay, right. Montlake. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like right by the stadium. And- yeah, so so we, if you're heading on that bridge, and the house was actually right on the left, like right down below. So you, you get off the exit, and then you go around, and then you, you come out, and there's like kind of like an older house. But we did this big, giant stairway down to the down to the uh, uh, sidewalk, and then we did all these pavers out in his back and uh, into his backyard and all this stuff. And we did all this elaborate shit, and he kept adding on stuff. And, uh, and then it was already a pain in the ass. <laughs> so yeah. we, were, we were already like, ah, oh, man, this guy is just a pain in the ass. And then you're like, and then we finally, uh, like, oh, finally done with this job. Ah, oh. and then you're like, yeah, he's not, he's not paying. And then everyone flipped their shit. <laughs> I, I don't remember that one. It's crazy. I, Cause I don't know how you can eat that. Like that pavers are not cheap. They're expensive. No, he must've ended up paying at least a portion of God, it. God, I hope so. The ones that I remember, like, uh, there was one on Mercer Island for a lawyer that was the very first one, mm. and they didn't pay. And so from that point on, I refused to work for any lawyers. Oh, God. But right? It was the hardest. He's like, well, to get technically, paid. I don't have to pay you. You're like, yeah. uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Article blah, 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 of uh, page number. <laughs> of, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> that seems like a great yeah. deal. <laughs> Oh, that's just terrible. I, I I don't know. Like half of me was like, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of willing uh, to go over there with Vic right now and, uh, you know, do some collecting action over here. But, but then half yeah. of me is like, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the, uh, uh, the way the laws technically work it. It's a real 
pain in the rear for that. Really, the only thing you can do is, yeah, you file a lien or take them to court. Ugh. So, I think the uh, what's the most angry that you've gotten from a job? I I remember when we were down in Portland, we, you got pretty. Was it Portland or listen? I can't remember which one it was. It kind of yeah. mixed into the two. But Portland was it Portland? <laughs> You're like it was Portland. Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember one time there being pretty angry. Um, you like drove down or something like that in the. I don't know if it was in the middle of the night or what. I can't remember, but you were pissed. <laughs> we're like, oh. Yeah. I got a phone call in the middle of the night. Uh oh. Because the crew, yeah, you guys were down there working, or the crew was down there working. So I had put them up in housing and that, and it was a pretty good sized job. I think it was a, it was a three or four month job. So they were down there for quite a while. So and what were so, you angry about? Do you remember? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I had rented these apartments for a guy. So I rented two units, uh, two, three bedroom units for all the guys to stay in. And I got a call in the middle of the night, like two or three in the morning from the police. Uh oh. And they were saying, you know, you know, is this Brian? Do you, you know, did you rent these apartments or whatever down in Oregon? It's like, yeah. Oh shit. Like, well, you know, we're having some problems with the guys that are staying there. Uh-oh. And, you know, and I don't remember exactly what they said after that. I was just, I was already fuming. I, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm on my way. This is when you turned, you, know, so. you, you turned into the Hulk and you just, you just saw red. Yeah. You, yeah. No, I, I remember, I, I know that there were two apartments. I, I know that part. And that was yeah. the one where, I think that was the one that many crooks was working on or yeah. it was, it was like a, I, I think you're right. Yeah, because like the, the you rented the duplexes for the Le Center job. Yep. And then the apartments for the Portland job. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then I remember just someone was like out like yelling on the balcony or something like that, and someone was like dropped a, like a glass and it like did it was like up several flights of stairs, so it was like it was like psh, 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 like all the way down. I was like, oh Jesus Christ, oh my God, yeah. these guys need to get inside now. Oh my God, so. I remember stuff like that. That could have, uh, you know, that could have been part of it. Um, part of the complaints. That... Was, I think the biggest complaint was there was a, uh, an apartment of girls that lived right below. Yeah. And it, I think it just got to be relentless harassment of the girls that Uh-oh. lived down below. Um, I mean, I, I remember they had a fishing pole out there and they were fishing off the balcony or something. I don't know what they were dangling down to the girl's apartment or whatever. You know, it's funny yeah. is I remember them doing that. I do. I wasn't doing it, but I remember them doing that. It was funny. No, cause like that was they, were, part of it. they were, ca- so what happened was that they were casting off of the, uh, off the back into the, there was like a, like a backyard thing. Like, and yeah. uh, so it was like, you're, it's like as if you were casting off of a dock. And, yeah. uh, and they reeled it up and they saw one of the girls like, like kind of like jokingly grab for it or something like that, I think. And, yeah. uh, and then, and then that was like their invitation to get harassed. <laughs> so, yeah. and then, but, but it's funny cause it started out good because like, uh, Lee, I think, uh, I think it was Lee. Was he, was he down there for that job or was it somebody oh, else? Yeah. Okay. So no, Lee, well, Lee did not work for me at the time. Oh, he came to visit. <laughs> Lee was one of the, <laughs> He admits to being one of the main instigators in no, that whole like, night. Yeah, Lee and, bought and, a candle. They had a candle party or something like that, and like Lee bought a candle or something. And he goes, "I never got uh, my fucking candle." And I go, "Forget the candle, Lee. Forget, forget it." Something like that. But Lee ended up leaving before I got there. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I ended up taking it out on Vic. And, oh God, yeah. Uh, I remember yikes that. yikes yeah so yep i definitely remember that one so yeah that's uh that's uh that's definitely the anger side i've seen you you were yeah you're not happy um so most of the time was fun though like i mean i remember when i first started with you guys at that lacy power plant and you'd roll in with that diesel truck of yours was that like a dodge was that a big old yeah. dodge truck yeah it was a dodge truck yep and and kevin i think it was kevin because like you know i that was like when I was like drawing all those like you know uh, pictures of the guy, uh, you know the face guy, and uh, he was like uh, yep. <clears throat> giving relations to another. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> there's this famous picture they used to draw, and like Kevin goes, Kevin goes, man, that truck's really dirty, and I think that deserves one of your uh, one of your pictures. And I go, oh yeah, okay. So I drew it on there, and I think it was like right on the. I think it was like you parked like back, and I drew it on one side, but I thought that there's no way that you couldn't of seeing this picture of a guy basically giving fellatio to another guy. And, uh, and you literally 
drove off with that. And I, I totally thought you probably just saw it, laughed, wiped it off or whatever. No, you drove around like all day with that thing on and you came back and I go, oh my God, Brian. I go, dude, that thing is still on your truck. And you're like, what? And I go, oh, and you, I think you were like, yeah, people were giving me some weird looks, but I didn't think anything of it. Like, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I got to take a picture. I have a picture somewhere. I don't know where that thing is, yep. but I have a picture somewhere of that thing. I got to find that. But, um, so I, I still feel bad about that. I mean, I mean, kind of, it was, it was funny, but, uh, but that, that opened the floodgate. Cause then, <laughs> uh, Vic loved to draw the penis on my truck. Oh just God. All over. And that would constantly, oh. he would draw the penis on no, everything. Yeah. Vic's, Vic's one was like, um, he would draw the, like, as if you were driving, like he would draw the, the rest of the guy and like something, I can't remember what he would draw, but yeah. 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 It did open the floodgate. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Bad influence. <laughs> And then you still would bring bring us donuts. Hey, yeah, uh, is it Donut Monday, Brian? Is it Donut Monday? And yeah, like, it was <sighs> Donut Donut Day. A lot of days. I think. <laughs> that was, yeah, but back that was then, my breakfast donuts and Mountain Dew back then. Yeah, so back then we could like you know we could work that off in like an hour. Yeah, yeah so it really didn't matter. Could. Like you know you can't. I mean I can't eat like that anymore. <laughs> yeah, just no, just slamming no. donuts and Mountain Dew. Do you still drink Mountain Dew? Uh, I do not. Do you drink any I, sort of form of Mountain Dew, like diet Mountain Dew or any kind of sodas, any, anything like that? I do not. What the so hell do you I drink? Have, I have cut cold turkey. <laughs> so I, 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 this is my second time quitting oh. drinking soda pop. Oh, it's like a recovery. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it really is. <laughs> so Brian, what, what, what do you drink now? What, what, what is your, uh, what's your go-to? What do you, what are you drinking? Right now, I drink water. Drink water. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Are you like uh, a? Are you a vegan now or? No. Okay. No, so you're I'm just not, okay. Not just checking. I hey. I, I don't know. No. no uh, I really. I really just tried to cut out the soda pop. That was it. That's all I really wanted to do. I, I remember. Other than that, so. Well, it's funny because I remember even when I just stopped drinking regular Mountain Dew because like I don't know how many calories is in that. I mean, it's just pure sugar. Uh, yeah. I, I think I was still working with you. I think it was like 2003 or something like that. And uh, I go, yeah, I just, I switched to a diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> you know, I, I, I had to wean myself off that, you know, like just to go, go to the diet. And I yep. lost like immediately like eight to 10 pounds or something like that. Yep. Just immediately. And I was like, dude, that's, that's yep. insane. That's crazy. And yep. you, you used to always get one of those big giant, what, what, how many ounces are those suckers? Those. Oh, I, 24 I two liters when we were young oh my but, yeah i just get a two liter because you know i if nothing else i'm uh frugal or cheap <laughs> yeah and those are cheap the cheapest i mean you get the most for the least amount of money if you just get the two liter so exactly exactly yeah, I, i'd get the two liter and wow. uh, unfortunately i drink the whole thing in a day. <laughs> so yeah you would uh you definitely go through a lot of them and sometimes you like eh, i think i'm getting another one of these and like you 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 get like two of the I, I don't know what those what are the bottles under like in between the the 12 ounces and the two liter it was like a big giant bottle but it was like you know what i'm yeah. talking about anyway they had the one liters yeah yeah but speaking of that truck that thing was a legend that thing was a legend how many miles did you end up putting on that sucker in in how many years oh gosh <laughs> so that truck, I was putting about 60 to 70,000 miles a year on that truck. It was insane, dude. Um, and yeah. And then you, I think you said something like, you're like, yeah, it had like 200,000 miles on it in like a, like, I don't know how many years, but then yeah. you, I remember you, la you, you came in, you, you were laughing, you were laughing cause you rolled in, you rolled that sucker into the, into the dealership and you're like, I cannot believe they gave me this much money for that truck. Yeah. <laughs> well, so unfortunately, yeah, I was putting like, yeah, 50, 60,000 miles a year, maybe 70,000, but anyway, made it to like 180,000 miles, but I think the truck was only three years old That's so crazy. and, and it cracked the, I cracked the block because <laughs> pretty much all of those miles were spent hauling equipment oh. and dump trailer with concrete, you know, and, and we were pretty, I was pretty rough on that thing. Yeah. Was, talk about getting your money's worth out of a truck. <laughs> Yeah. So cracked the block. So I, you know, took it in and you know, how much do you give me for it? And they, 
I don't remember how much it was, but it I couldn't believe it was yeah. as much as it was. It doesn't I mean, matter how much you got because no matter how much you got was uh, more than it was probably worth because you knew how much it was going to cost to like actually get that thing. It, oh, yeah. How are they? Do you think they tried to resell that? Like put all the work into like redoing everything and, and selling that or just like, uh, all right. Yeah, I, I, I bet they probably just, well, I don't know. I would assume <laughs> they take it to an auction and just get rid of it. But. Right. Yeah, who knows? That was the price they gave me for it. I mean, I think they gave me money like they were going to resell it. <laughs> it was about three times what I thought I would get for it. So. Damn. Now, we, I've actually, you know, we were talking about Vegas earlier, and I've actually been to Vegas with you a couple times. And they were for those conventions. Mm hmm. What are they, like 2001, 2002, something like that? Does that sound about right? Yeah, something like that. Yep. And, I just know that it was always somewhere like you were talking about January, February, because it was, I, I, I was always like, man, Vegas, yeah, it's going to be all warm. We go to pools and, and the pools were never open. <laughs> yeah. It was, like, it was cold. I was like, why is it so cold here? Is this supposed to be like warm in the desert? You're like, eh, it's February. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and that one time we went there, we, uh, we ran into uh, Hugh Hefner. You remember that? <laughs> well, we didn't run into him, but like he was showing up. And that was the time that he had like those, he was dating the like seven blonde girlfriends. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember that. I was like, I remember we were all standing there and they're like, this guy goes, oh, oh, here he comes. He goes. And I'm like, we're like, oh, did we get here? Like, what's going on here? And like, everyone starts running towards the front and we're like, I guess we'll go to the front. I don't know what's going on. So like we, we go to the front and one of those giant like SUV limos. <laughs> yep. And it was just blasting like techno music. <laughs> like had like a strobe lights and shit going on. And then like all these like girls came out and you're like, what the hell? And then, and then Hugh Hefner comes out and I'm like, Whoa, yeah. Hugh Hefner. And I was like, you know, this pre like, you know, everybody having their digital phones and stuff. And I'm trying to like, I'm trying to take a picture and I'm like, Oh, I hope one of these turns out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta get that film developed. Yeah, I guess I'll find out in a couple of weeks when I get this developed. Uh, yeah, so, but that was kind of cool. We got to see Hugh Hefner like in uh, in person right next to us. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. That. We found out they were just starting the AVN Award <laughs> convention, is why they were there. It was right after the World of Concrete. And so that's why. Oh, that's all. I think, I think I remember, like, like Vic's like, I think I'd want to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was back in the day when they, uh, I think I talked about this with somebody else. When you walk the streets of Vegas back then, they, they hand out those, those little cards, those little porn cards. Cause it's like their <laughs> yeah. little advertisements for their, you know, essentially their, you know, hookers and stuff. And we'd be like, Whoa. And we started collecting them. We had like piles of these like cards and we're like, at the end, we're like, I don't know what to do with all these, but uh, I don't know. Anyway. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, um, did you, were you at the Ryan Dunham bachelor party or? I was not there for the bachelor party. It's probably um, another convention. <laughs> I was there. I introduced Ryan sort of to uh, Sarah. Oh. I don't remember if you no, were that there. Was, no, no. There. So that was the following year. So I went with, I went with you in 2001, 2002. And 2002 okay. was the one time we went down with, there were like kind of like a big group of people like yeah. me and Kevin and. Velasco and like all these like people. And then the yep. next year you actually introduced Ryan to Sarah. Now, wait, how did that, was that like you guys are just talking to girls or something or what? So we were, yeah, we were there. I think it was Super Bowl weekend actually. Yes. And that's we exactly what it was. Super Bowl. And we we're all there, you know, we were just out at a club or whatever. And, uh, let me set the mood for you. Go ahead, go ahead. I think, no, kind of, I think it was like an Irish bar. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was an Irish bar, and we were upstairs at this bar, and you know, kind of looking down, there was a group of I don't know five, six of us guys were there. I can't remember how many, and there was a table of girls down below with no guys there, and uh, <laughs> and we were kind of watching them, you know, and guys would walk up to the table, and then you know they'd immediately get shot down and oh. leave. Ever. and uh i can't remember if it was ryan's like oh look at that you know and, and randy and i randy was there with me and we were looking down we're like you guys should go talk to him because randy and i were both married right at the time. so <laughs> yeah. it's like hey you guys yeah table full of girls you guys should go down there and talk to him you know nobody would go so randy and i kind of looked at each other we're like well we'll go <laughs> so randy and i randy and i go down there, and there was another guy that kind of 
or we found a table next to him. We sat down at this table and other people would come up, you know, guys kept coming up to the table. And so finally Randy and I made a bet on if the guys were going to get shot down or not. <laughs> and so we made a bet and, you know, sure enough, this guy gets shot down and we were both laughing and the girls kind of turned to us and, you know, we're saying, you know, want to know why we're laughing. And so we're telling, <laughs> well, we put a bet that you were going to, you know, we gave that guy 10 seconds or whatever before you'd take him out of here. <laughs> That's always a fun game, off. by the way. We, yeah. <laughs> and so they thought that was kind of funny. And, you know, and so we went over to start talking to him. They were going to shoot us down. And I, someone said something about being married and kids or something <laughs> oh, like that. Oh, no threat, no threat. And, and so Randy and I pulled out pictures. So Randy pulls out pictures of, you know, his wife and kids He's like, I'm married. I got kids right here, you know, and I, you know, and I pulled out a picture of my wife. And so then, so then we were safe. Yep. You know, so Randy and I were safe. So we got to stay So then we were sitting there. <laughs> so then we were just talking to him and he eventually waved Ryan and everyone else down and they all came down and started. So then they led everyone there and then we just started hanging out and Sarah was there and she was one of the girls there. You like infiltrating the pack. Talking. Yeah. They started talking and whatnot and, you know, nice. Not- and the rest is history and yada, yada, yada. And now they're married and they have two kids and uh, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I awesome. still remember Ryan saying he was uh, engaged oh. like a year or two later or something. And, and it surprised me. I was, you know, engaged, engaged to who? I didn't even know you were dating. <laughs> and, and then he tells me it's the girl, you know, the girl from that we met in Vegas. And I, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I, like that was yeah that's I awesome saw that was coming so that's funny man it was, it was pretty funny yeah there's some good times in vegas i mean we didn't we didn't like we didn't get we didn't really do anything crazy like i, I think it was funny that um there was that one time that uh we went into the casino and i think you were there when uh simon was like smoking and vic was smoking and and like they got yelled at and then like <laughs> then uh, simon's like well don't bring your fucking kids to vegas then and he like blows smoke and like in their face i'm like whoa whoa that really happened he's like yeah he's like fucking bullshit and i'm like oh my god wow whoa slow down guys slow down you know but uh, <laughs> i love these yeah, like I remember that. these guys <laughs> <laughs> just giving no shits um brian now you actually grew up as a mormon you were raised as a mormon correct correct yep and I bring that up because you have many of your core values of the religion. Not, and I'm not saying that as a bad way. I, I, I really don't. Like most of the, most of the Mormon people that I know are fantastic, you know, citizens and you know, good people, whatever. Um, and you actually uh, lived in Phoenix for a while, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I how did. how long did you live in Phoenix? Uh, we were only in Phoenix for two years. Okay. And you don't have good experiences uh, living in Phoenix. No, I <laughs> I you're... despised Phoenix. I <laughs> and it's funny because like we we always talk about this. You were you were in Phoenix at probably the worst time for a young person to be in Phoenix, in my opinion. Like, yeah. how old were you? So I moved there. I was twelve when okay. we moved, and fourteen when we left. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, it's. I mean, you're not. Phoenix, I always talk about how Phoenix doesn't like kids. Yep. <laughs> this place doesn't cater to children. They like adults and they like old people. Yeah. So, you know, if you're a kid, then you're just like, okay, well, I, I mean, I could, I could swim in a pool. Uh, I could go to the lake, I guess. But how am I getting to the lake? I don't know. Yep. So, yeah, I get it. I mean, and then you moved up to Washington. What year did you move up to Washington? I moved up in 1990. So 1990. So you grew up in the 90s in Seattle. Probably the best era to grow up in Seattle is the 90s. All yep. that, you know, explosion of growth and the music and all that good stuff. And you actually went to the University of Washington for college. Correct. Now, Brian, you have one of the greatest stories of college that I've ever heard. I love this story. I think it's hilarious. And uh, it had something to do with like when you were staying in the dorms, correct? Yeah. Which? Uh, hey, give me some more hints. I'm trying had to remember. The, had some. Had some <laughs> which story <laughs> you're talking about? It had something to do with an elevator or truth and dare or something like that. Uh, like. Oh God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, with Kevin. Um, oh my God! I didn't know this was with Kevin. 
This is Kevin. <laughs> this is Kevin. This was. Dude, I am, Kevin was I'm completely insane back in the day. On the details, I don't remember exactly, <laughs> but somehow Kevin was over visiting me, and he ended up in the elevator with his pants down or something, right in the elevator. Um, somebody, okay, yeah. So somebody said that uh, you guys were playing like I don't know what it was, like Truth or Dare or something like that, some stupid, you know, whatever kids play in college, whatever. And uh, and someone lost. And you had to get on the elevator and go down naked. Yep. And uh, door opens. I don't know what this person did or whatever, but I don't know if they just got or like they looked at you and like turned around or, or who the hell it was. I don't know. But I love that story. I I, I always wanted to make that into like a scene in a movie or something. Um, yeah. It's just that, so funny to me. That was Kevin, and that <laughs> was at my dorm because Kevin did not go to school there. <laughs> <laughs> he he just came there for the weekends basically and we just partied I, on the weekends gotcha so uh, kevin yeah. um kevin was one of the craziest people that i've ever met especially when i first met him and that would probably be right around that era uh so it would have been just before he went to central exactly I mean, it would have been you know it was while he was going to green river exactly um, <laughs> and working so he probably it probably was a year or two before he went to central. Jesus, that, that, that guy, man, I, I remember, I mean, he was nuts. Like there's stories that I kind of want to save for this uh, show, but I mean, there were some nutty stories that that guy used to do. You know, most people just get drunk and do stupid stuff. I I used to get drunk and uh, we used to go to the bars and then there was like this little seating area in between the two bathrooms at this little club that we used to go to. And then I would, you know, take a seat there and then I'd pass out and they'd be like, Hey, idiot! Hey, you're like, <laughs> like, they're like, you know, like, oh, Jesus, uh, drinking, <laughs> drinking. It, you know, that's like the one time that you were in Vegas and you're like, uh, you're like, oh, I'm not even feeling nothing, man. I got another shot in me. Hey, let's, hey, give me that bottle. Give me that bottle over there. We're like, yeah. Brian, uh, I don't think in the history of time, unless you're Andre the Giant, I don't think anybody has ever beaten alcohol. And you're like, give me the bottle. We're like, ah, Brian, and you're like. Dude, I ain't no, I ain't no wuss. And I'm like, Brent, you don't even usually drink. You're not a drinker. Yeah, I, I, I've still never, uh, never touched Jägermeister. Oh again. God, was that what it was? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, the poor, never again. the poor people down below in the uh, casino. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the lobby of the. Yeah, there you go. Of the casino, you're like, uh, okay, I, I'm not. I don't think it. Where's the bathroom? Like, uh, I think it's down there. You're like, I ain't going to make it. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, you know, being in a a, a state that you are in when you're, you know, um, not feeling well, uh, you did the right thing. You're like, look, I'm, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to find a plant except for the plants weren't, you know, real. They're fake. The fake plants. Yeah. Yeah. So I found a nice big flower pot right next to the slot it's, machine come on it's nothing they've never seen before yeah. probably they'd see it every single night you know what i mean that's so funny but yeah. anyway yeah um <laughs> i was courteous <laughs> now i've had lee on the show a few times and we occasionally bring up some of the uh jobs that we've had together over the years and do you remember that famous or maybe it's infamous i don't know i mean not to lee and i we loved it but you gave us those uh those brown t-shirts and uh, it was it was Man Boob Monday from then on. It was like we we had to wear those shirts uh, from then on. I remember, I remember. <laughs> I I don't remember the man boobs as much as you guys talked about it. <laughs> well, because like Lee and I were like we were like oh thanks, and then we put them on. And I'm like this looks like one of those halter tops that uh, girls wear. Those. Uh... <laughs> it's like, I was I, like, are these I actually to feel like still this? have one. You, do you really? <laughs> it was. Yeah, and on the back it says "Year of the Patio, 2002." Oh my year, God! Okay, Year of the Patio. You need to send me a picture of of one of those shirts. You don't have to be wearing it, but you know, if you do, it you know might well, emphasize you know that. your your good parts. So yeah. uh, definitely send me a picture because I want to see it. I want to reminisce about that picture. But um, <laughs> now, Brian, there are some interesting characters, some very interesting characters that oh, we've yeah. worked with over the years that you've worked with. I'm sure you've worked with even more than, you know, I just, I was there for what, four years and then another, you know, couple months or whatever. But do you remember the gentleman that worked there who was named Ed Nugent? Oh, I do. 
Yeah, the one-eyed pirate. Yes, yes. And you can't make this up. Yeah, his name was Ed Nugent, not Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ed Nugent. And this guy, I love this guy. He, he was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He had the eye patch. He was like the, you know, stocky guy, you know, and he, I always remember him like laughing a lot. And he was like, he would always tell these, like, I don't know if they're nursery rhymes or whatever you call them, but he's like, there once was a man from Nantucket. And I'm like, what the, he's like, he's really like a pirate. Like, yeah. <laughs> and this guy yeah. had the craziest stories ever. Like, I would love to have this guy. I, I, I think, I, yeah. I, I think a, a, a couple of years ago, I, I, I looked him up. Cause like, you know, I was like, oh, someone brought up Ted Nugent. I'm like, well, what about Ed Nugent? So I, I, I looked him up and I'm like, I think I found him on Facebook. He was like yeah. Yeah, him and his wife, uh, up in Seattle still. So, um. But uh, this guy was like, he, he had these stories about like everything from losing his eye. I think he like kept it like cold in a, I don't know what, I don't even remember the story. I, I'd be butchering if I had tried, but he said that he, he claims, and I think he said he's done speeches about this, but he was the closest living survivor from the blast of Mount St. Helens, the eruption in 1980. Yes. That's, that's he's, what he says. He said he like, he blew off his feet, like in the air, like, like 20, I don't know how many feet, like yeah. several yards or whatever. And, uh, yeah. that guy was just, it was fun to work with. I think the only time that, uh, he wasn't fun to work with is, uh, one of us, you know, we'd go, uh, drinking at Dante's and, uh, and then the next day it would just be like a complete, like, you know, gas fest. And, uh, I think one of us like blue ass like when we were like digging or something like that and and he uh he turns around and he goes god damn it and he, like he took a shovel and like he was gonna hit one of us and i was like oh my god oh my god <laughs> he's like fucking mother and i was like holy shit oh god <laughs> jesus yeah i wasn't even sure like when he would tell those stories because he's got some alien stories he was in new mexico for a while yeah. and yeah losing his eye story and then the saint helens thing and i I was always skeptical of his stories. Um, <laughs> and then I, he invited me to dinner at his house, me and my wife. And yeah. we went over there and had dinner with him and his wife. And he was showing me all of his, you know, St. Helens stuff and all the pictures he took. Whoa. St. Helens on that same morning and showing Dude. me everything. And yeah. And you know, the newspaper articles with him in it. And that's that. wild. That part of it. That part of it is true. Um, that's awesome. But then he was telling me how someone he had more, but someone broke into his house and stole all of his pictures and memorabilia from St. Helens. Who the hell does that? God, I don't know. That's like this story about there's this group that had a song back in the late 70s. It was called, uh, you know, that song is called Baby Come Back. You know that song? Yep, um, I do. It's a group called Player. I think they're like a kind of like a one hit wonder. I think they might've had like another minor hit or whatever. Anyway, this guy had like gold records and stuff like a hand on the walls and like someone broke in and stole like the memorabilia and something. He goes, he goes, okay, really? Like who, yeah. who, first off, what are you going to do with that memorabilia? Are you going to sell it? Like, uh, it's like his gold records and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't understand stealing personal stuff. No, if you want to steal like, you know, a stereo, which I've had many stereos stolen. I, I get that. I get it. But, yeah. um, but not stuff like that. I don't understand that. Yeah. I'm gonna break in and, I'm going to break into your house, Brian. I'm going to steal some pictures of your, your daughter and your kids and your little dog too. No. Yeah. So. <laughs> get no. you and your dog. So what ways do you usually uh, go about hiring? Obviously, uh, word of mouth is always, uh, you know, a good one. How did you used to like hire people? Did you hire people through like newspapers or ads or like how did you hire people? Well, in the early days, it was basically all word of mouth. And mm -hmm. I hired a lot of, we hired a lot of college kids actually, cause we were, <laughs> had more work during the summer. Yeah. You know, not as much in the winter. So I hired college kids. Yeah. Uh, and and that, that makes sense because, uh, remember when we had, uh, James Murr come work for us for a while? I do. Yeah. <laughs> for, yeah. He was there for a little bit. Dude. And it was like, it was one of those jobs where we had one of those, uh, retaining walls. Like we're like, it was the big, heavy retaining walls. Like, I don't know how, how big and heavy those blocks are. Like we're talking like, you know, they're, 
80 or 90 pounds. Yeah, they're heavy, right? And he and, and we'd be like, okay, so Mur, like this is how you want to carry these. You want to make sure that you're, you know, straight up. You want to slide it uh, to the to the back, and then you want to lift it and like make sure you're not like using your back and blah blah. And he's like, oh fuck that. And he's like, and he like he goes, you guys are pussies, man. And like, uh, and he was, I started carrying like two at a time, and we're like, oh yeah. man. He's like, and he, <laughs> and he kept doing that, like, and I was like, dude, you're you don't have to do that. And like we we get it. You're tough. You're a tough guy. You, you know. And he called us pussies, but you know. Then the next day, I think it was you that went to go pick him up. And well, I think, well, he, later that day, he had to quit working that same day, I think, because his, because he totally, like his biceps totally cramped up or something and he couldn't lift anything anymore. You, the next I think day, it was that same day. So this is the, this is the best part. So yeah, he, I think he, he might have like, you know, stopped working for, for a bit that day. But the, the next day, someone went to go pick him up and he wasn't even answering the door. And, uh, you know, of course they call me because I'm the one that knows Murr. <laughs> So, so I'm like, uh, Hey, Murr, what the, f-? and I'm like leaving messages. And I go, he's not answering me either. And they're like, ah. cause like someone was at his door, like picking hey, him up. It was me. I think I went to, <laughs> yeah. I was picking him up on the way. I'm like, you're like, he's not answering. On Just pounding on it. Yeah. And you were calling him. I was like, Oh, well, there you go. There you go. And we're lifting yep. those, uh, those pavers or those, uh, those retaining wall blocks two at a time. There you go. There you go. So. Um, but yeah, no, I think the most interesting character by far is probably, uh, the infamous Vic. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> I would say oh, you so. mean, is there a debate? Is there a debate that, uh, Vic is, uh, uh, no, I mean like, look, there have been many characters who have worked for you over the years, but no, no one's been as uh, colorful or as controversial than this yeah. guy. And, yeah. uh, I should probably... I should probably have him on the show one day. I mean, he don't, he's, he's, he has that, like, not give a shit factor up to, like, you know, to the 10 meter or to, yeah. the, to the 11. <laughs> yep. And uh, I always say this because, like, I, you, it's hard to describe Vic to people. Um, but, you know, this is back then. I don't know if he's still the same. I, you know, whatever. But uh, if I was to compare Vic to anybody, it wouldn't be a human being. It would be a Muppet. And that Muppet would be animal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, that's a good comparison. Because he be, a very good comparison. I mean, at the flip of a switch, this guy would just like fucking lose his shit. And and I'd be like, uh, we'd be working on a job site and uh and it wouldn't even take much. It'd be like uh we'd be moving blocks or whatever. And uh and he'd just start yelling at the radio. <laughs> he'd be like, You are stupid, you are fucking you know nothing. And we're like, we're like, whoa, what's going on, dude? He's like, and it was like he was like yelling at like, you know, BJ Shea or Tom Lagas or something like that. <laughs> you know what? We should maybe just leave this for another episode because there's so many Vic stories. But um, speaking of the radio, there was always like a, a lot of uh, hijinks going on on your work sites. And I remember a few times we'd be blasting like, you know, Tom Likas and you'd be meeting up with a client <laughs> and you'd be like, uh, can you turn that down a bit? <laughs> and he's like, you, know, you could hear Likas in the background. Like, you are a bitch, you know, and so, like stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm yeah. like. I'd always be cringing and, and Vic's like, oh, fuck that. You fucking turn that shit up. And I'm like, uh, we're like, we're blasting this shit through like neighborhoods and stuff like that. Did yeah. you ever, what did you think about that? You know what? At the time, like I didn't, I was more oblivious of it at the time. I mean. Yeah. A lot of the time you would just be getting out of your truck and you'd be like, Hey, how's it going? You know, and the guy's like over there and I'm like, Oh God, I, I think I was one of the more ones that was always kind of squeamish of that. I'm like, Oh, we should probably turn yeah. this down. Uh, it didn't but, bother me as much. Cause I, I don't think it, I don't think it happened as much when I was there. I mean, yeah, I really right. I think you're probably talked, right. <laughs> I've talked to Lee about it, kind of, about things in the past. And he would tell me stories that I never even knew happened. Like I never even heard about it or knew you know any of the stuff um because i wasn't there but Did i mean you, i remember yeah. a few times you know just cussing vic out and just getting really pissed <laughs> off at vic and yelling at him but i don't good screaming matches back in the day the fix yeah do you remember uh when we were doing a job at Edom claw and lee cut out a penis out of a brick and we called it paver dick yeah i remember that <laughs> my brother found that in like my parents garage a while back and i'm like oh my god next time you're coming down you're bringing that and he goes all right it's like it's in your pile and i'm like oh yes i'm like reunited with the paver dick <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do with the paver dick i don't know you like, still have it yeah yeah oh, i have geez. it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah well it kind of matched all the drawings that vic would put on my truck exactly but exactly <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> so some of my favorite jobs working with you were the ones that I was working actually with you. And those were kind of like, you know, some of the earlier years when, you know, you'd have like smaller jobs where you'd do like, you know, residential jobs and stuff like that. And one of the jobs that sticks out for me was the Pokemon house. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. I Where was that, that house? Oh, there's a North Bend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that person had like, I don't know, they had something to do with like Pokemon or Wizards of the Coast or, or something. I can't remember yeah, what it was. She was, uh, she owned all the Wizards of the Coast, but I thought that she also was one of the early investors or yeah, something. She was the inventor of Pokemon. Jesus. Or early, something early with Pokemon. Wow. And they eventually, I mean, they sold the Nintendo, I think it was. Wow. He sold it to Nintendo or what, but yeah, she... That place was completely insane. I, I don't think I've ever been in a house like that before. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, Steven Spielberg designed her uh, movie theater. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. You're like, Lucas Art, like is designing the front entrance Lucas, when you walk okay. in. <laughs> that's right, yeah. It was like, the, it, like an exact replica of the Death Star when you open yeah. it up. And then it goes, it goes like, and like, and then it goes into the movie theater. That was inside. Yep. And then I, from what I remember the, on to the left, if you go to the left, then it looked like Ricky Schroeder's old place with all the, you know, video games and, and all that stuff. That um, was a different room, but yeah, they, okay. they had a, they had a pinball arcade, right. like, or like, a, like an arcade that was, I mean, huge arcade. And then they had, you know, inside the house, they also had like a 10,000 square foot art gallery. God, it was um, crazy, man. I mean, all of this was inside the house. Well, I remember when the, it's so far in the middle of nowhere, you know, no one's, no one's breaking into the, I don't think anybody could even find this place if you were trying, you know what I mean? Like it's one of those places. So like when the guys left for the night, we were like, hey, let's walk, let's just walk around. It's, you know, it's nothing you could, you know, take or anything like that. We were just walking around this house. And I remember <laughs> we were like walking around. We're like, whoa, Brian, look at this. It's like a secret doorway to like, there was like so many like secret compartments and stuff like that. And we were like, I remember yeah. cause it was just beyond like, you know, being framed, you know, like to that next state of, you know, construction. And, um, I remember you going, Hey, where are you? And I'm like, I have no idea where I am. <laughs> I'm in the walls. I felt like I was like in that, that, that movie, uh, the people under the stairs, like people yeah. like in the walls, like running around, like, I'm like, Whoa, this is, this is wild. This is a cool yeah. house, man. That, so that was like one of the coolest houses that I've uh, ever seen in person. It, that was pretty awesome. So it was a really cool house. It was really funny because it was probably the biggest house. <laughs> it was huge. I mean, like I say, they had a 10,000 square foot art gallery inside the house. And that was only a small part of the house. I mean, I think that house was 30 or 40,000 square feet. Right, right. I mean, if you don't count the compound that we uh, worked on before I left in like 2011, that thing wasn't even a house. Yeah. I don't even know what the heck that was. Yeah, that was another big one. It was one. like a fortress. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, it like, well, this building over here is this, and this giant building over here is that. I'm like, what is it? Are these all the same house? Like, what is this? Yeah. Some insane the funniest, places. The funniest thing I remember about, well, like that last compound you're talking about, you'd see the owner, he'd drive in in his Bugatti. I remember he had a Bugatti, <laughs> and that was... How much are those worth? Oh, geez, those, they're over a million dollars. I don't know. They're they're really expensive. I think the Bugattis now are like three or four million. Jesus. But he had a Bugatti, and... And that was the most disappointing thing with the Pokemon house because I went back there after they moved in. <laughs> yeah. And, and I always found it kind of funny because like in the movie theater in her house, I don't know if you remember, but you remember how many seats were in there? Or did you ever see it when there were seats in there? No. So the whole thing, replica of the Death Star, you're like you're talking about this big, huge, I think it was a 35 millimeter projection. It was before all the digital stuff. Right. But I had a 35 millimeter projector in there. And they would buy new run, like brand new run movies to show in there. But I had two seats, two seats for, <laughs> for her and her boyfriend. And I, that floored me with the two seats. But then the other thing that I remember, I went back there after they were living there because we had, you know, there was something around the pool. I had to do something with some pavers around the pool, something. And so I went there and, you know, her boyfriend opened the door. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'll open the garage or we'll go through the garage and meet me out back. So I'm thinking, okay, cool. Cause I love cars. I wanted yeah. to see what kind of cars they had. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. Cause they've got this, you know, <laughs> five car garage. Uh -oh. I'm thinking there's going to be some really nice cars in here. Oh boy. And I remember opening the door 
and there were two green Honda Civics. And <laughs> it was a good car. So <laughs> disappointed. And that was it. That was all that was in there. There were green two, Honda Civics? Two matching, two matching green Honda Civics. I remember that specific. Wow. They were like the green, kind of that, yeah, that yeah. green Honda Civic. Maybe they like to lay low. They didn't like to, uh, you know, be flashy about their, uh, you know, they're building a house in the yeah. middle of nowhere. No one can see where they're living. They're, uh, they're, they want to mix in with the, uh, you know, with the peasants and the. They didn't see Google Earth coming. No. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to spot the forty thousand square foot house. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Big old compound in the back. Yeah, that God, that thing is yeah. crazy. Yeah. So I, I always talk about that. I'm like, oh man, that house is nuts. Yeah. So and that was I saw it before it was even done. So I'm sure it looked even cooler when it was done. Um, yeah. do you remember doing this job? I, for some reason, I always remember this job. I don't know why, but there was like this little community down by Lake Washington. I think we did a couple of jobs in this area, but you drive down this little, little windy road down, like right on, like essentially on the water. And we put in these imported Indian stone, like <laughs> you had to set these Indian stones in, and I couldn't believe, I just... I, I kept asking you over and over. I'm like, wait, how much is one of these stones? Just one of these stones? And and you'd be like, I don't know what it was, like 20 bucks or so. I don't even know. Remember, I can't remember. I was like, wait a minute, one of these stones? Or it was something crazy. Do you remember yeah. this? I do. I do. And that was, I think that was on Lake Sammamish. Is, that's oh, was it, was it Lake Sammamish? Because they were in the playoffs. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I just remember, I, I couldn't believe, like, how much are the one of those like just one of those stones? Do you remember? Or, I mean, you probably know more than I do. Yeah, I mean, they were. It was a custom, yeah, Indian granite or something. It might not have even been Indian. It might have been Italian. I can't remember. But yeah, they were probably. I mean, they were small, so they're like little four by four sets, and they yeah, they're probably five or ten bucks a piece. <laughs> I just yeah. remember because like we had just a whole truckload full of them, and I'm like, wait a minute, yeah. like I'm doing the math on here, I'm like this is a lot, this is a lot of money for these, and you're like, well, they're hand carved, for like yeah. someone hand, car I'm like, oh, god, yeah. how much money were they making? <laughs> yeah, that's nothing compared to what the city of Seattle spends on pavers. Oh boy, oh. yeah. Anyway, that's another story. Yikes! <laughs> Your tax dollars at work. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Seattle, it's getting better with taxes though, right? Like in cost of living. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you, did you move back to the old house that you live, that you used to live in or cause you did live in, you lived up on the mountains or something like that, right? Yeah. So we lived up at Hayak. We lived at the ski area, basically there at Snoqualmie Pass at the Hayak ski area. Yeah. And loved it there. Lived there for, I think six years. Mm -hmm. And kids were growing up and they needed better schools and that so we ended up moving back to maple valley for the oh school. okay gotcha so wait okay now you're in maple valley do you still have that other house or did you sell that other house in renton up in the uh where we own the renton house still oh you we do one. oh wow okay gotcha yep. so it's a rental we use it as a rental now do you still have the cow on the wall in there no, no, that got painted over. Oh man, that got painted over when we rented it out. Oh. It was it was tough to rent with the cow <laughs> going down the stairs. What's the what was the deal with the cow? Is that did that come with the house and you guys had it, or is that did you guys paint that, or what, what was that? It came with the house. So came... the people that lived there before us, before we bought it, I guess they were fairly eclectic. <laughs> uh, and yeah, they had you know a mural. A mural of a cow walking down the stairs painted <laughs> on the wall by the basement stairs. That's like that's like my uh, my buddy John. They just left this uh, this picture of a clown and in their uh, laundry chute, and they're like, "We're not moving the clown. We're not. Yeah. We're just gonna keep it there." <laughs> <laughs> so, do you ever go back to any of the old jobs that you you, you mentioned that you went back to the the Pokemon house? Um, have you gone back to any of those old jobs and like checked out like some of the work that you did over the years? Um. Well, occasionally I'll get to see a residential one if they want us to come do something else there. Gotcha, so gotcha. One to you... do their driveway, and they only had a patio that we did before or something. Or right, that happened occasionally. How about the UW Walk of Fame? Uh, yeah, area. I've been there. Yeah, is that still been, holding up? Yeah. yeah, it's still in there, still holding up. They actually they changed out the logos, so the logos that we water jet cut. Yeah. <laughs> they changed that out and now they have because they didn't like the weasley looking dog logo that we put in there it was weasley before yeah it was weasley 
Yeah. And so now they, they went with a, uh, a manly just dog W just the classic purple W. Oh, so they really? Something else replace that. Uh, how about the old dog? What about the old big W like strong dog? Like yeah, I, I didn't that's think the best logo, right? Don't you think? I loved it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I wasn't a big fan of the weasel dog, but and what about the uh, what about those jobs where you had the uh, the compass, the fan, like compass jobs? What, what are those called? You know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, we did like a compass rose is kind of is what we call it. Um, we've done a few of those for some residential jobs in their driveways. We actually did one for a commercial project down in Ruston. Oh wow! So, I just uh, remember those. Uh, well, I only did one, and it was you know when I say I did it, I was you know, loading Kelly up with uh, blocks, but he's like, I need a Twinkie. I'm like, all right, here you go, buddy. Uh, no, but so I, I just remember, uh, I would be trying not to trip over all the lines that, that you guys would set up because it looked like, uh, it kind of reminded me of that movie entrapment with, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones and company, yeah. uh, trying to go through all the, the lasers in the, in the security yeah. room. Yep. It's just like there's there's lines going everywhere because you have to be so perfect with the, you know, laying that down. Yep. So yep. it's kind of funny. So um, we could talk about construction all day, but hey, I just, I, I want to bring up a couple of other activities here that we did over, you know, the years that we did partake in. All right. um, for example, Brian, do you remember going to see the movie Valentine with Kelly and I in 2001? Gosh. And, no, <laughs> and I, I I don't. I knew you would say that, but I know that you'll know what I'm talking about once I start describing uh, what happened at this movie theater. Okay. So, I normally don't remember details of what happened within a movie theater. I, I don't care. I usually remember the movie, right? That, you know, that's usually how it goes, right? Yeah. But this one, this one sticks out more than any other film that I've ever seen because it was down in the Rainier Valley. In 2001, and again, this was uh, a movie, just some shitty slasher movie. It starred Denise Richards. I think that's probably why we went to see it. You know, Catherine yeah. Heigl was in it, I think. Anyway, so this movie, I don't think that any of us uh, had been to strictly, uh, how do you put this? Um <laughs> A very, a very culturally <laughs> diverse theater like this before. Um, okay, I'm yeah. just gonna say it. You know, it, it, we were the only, we were the only white guys in the in, the, in the, the entire theater. Three white guys in the so, whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But but this thing, it was like uh, it was crazy because I remember nothing about the actual movie. All I remember is what happened in the movie theater, and. It was nuts. It was like those, you know, when people make fun of these theaters, like on TV or in the movies. And I, you know, I, I never thought this was like real. I thought this was just, you know, just made up. No, it was real. Like people like talking like normal, like we're talking now, like, you know, making cell phone calls and like talking like loud. They're talking loud. Um, yep. And just, you know, people having conversations like, you know, just, hey, Brian, how you doing? Uh, you know, this isn't like, you know, before the movie starts. This, we're talking like this is. And like, I remember people standing up like, oh, fuck you, bitch. And like, um, what is going on? And you're like, this is right during the movie. Like, and then, you know, the classic, you know, like, uh, you know, the girls yeah. like running from, you know, some killer. And it's like, run, you stupid bitch, run. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, you didn't. Like, yeah. no, don't go in there. Don't go <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah, I was like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, like part of me was like that, that kind of stuff was kind of cool. But, um, and then like, there was like this, I don't know who was sitting back at me. I have no idea. Uh, someone yeah. spilled their whole bucket of popcorn in back of me and all the butter the slippery butter was like it it went down under my feet and i was wearing shorts so yeah. it was slim i couldn't stop my feet from sliding in, into the seat in front of me and it actually caused like bruises on my shins from the seats <laughs> and then uh, so i was like wow this is a crazy day like i i, I literally there's nothing i could do unless i wanted to lift my feet up i couldn't not stop my feet from like sliding into the seat in front of me but i think we were leaving that place and the cops were like they showed up afterwards and were like and i think it was kelly he's like should we like try to get our money back that was you know like, let's get the fuck out of here <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds like kelly uh, yeah I money. mean, should we like uh, try to get and like, nope, let's go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> we're, eat, we're eating the cost of this one. Let's get out of here. So, you know, I, I just always remember that. I was like, dude, that was the craziest. And I was like, wait a minute. That was with Brian. 
That was a Brian yeah. and Kelly. I had, I had forgotten that about that until you, <laughs> you brought that up. But yeah. Oh man, that's wild. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I never went back to that place again. <laughs> that was. I mean, well, you couldn't hear, understand the movie. No. The whole thing. Oh shit, no, I couldn't. Yeah, I think we just went to see it just because it was close. It's like it was. Yeah. Hey, it's down the road. You know, it's like a. It's also that area also is notorious uh, for everyone that I've ever met to having the worst Walmart that I've ever been in. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't, I'd rather drive like 30 miles to go to a different Walmart than go yeah. to that Walmart down there. It's so bad. Yeah. My wife and I talk about that. Cause we lived, we lived just up the hill from there. Right. And so that was the closest Walmart when we lived in Renton. <laughs> that was the closest Walmart. And the Fred Meyer there was really similar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we went in there, you know, once or twice and, and it was just, I mean, stuff all over the floor. I mean, like someone just cleared the shelves off onto the floor, you know, all when you go into the clothes area, there's not one piece of clothing hanging up. Like they're all on the floor or they're just thrown over the bar. Like so crazy, know, man. Mess. It's and wild. So we never went to a Walmart, you know? <laughs> oh like, yeah. No, assumed that's well, the way Walmart was. And everyone always talked bad about them anyway. So it was yeah. Like, oh. No, because like must be the way they are. When I moved here, everyone's like, "Yeah, just go to Walmart." I think they have the. And I'm like, "Walmart? Are you fu- are you fucking yeah. kidding me? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to Walmart." And like walking to Walmart, it looked like a nice like department store. I was like, "What is yeah. going on here? Like, this That's... is kind of nice. It was like hot chicks walking around. I'm like, what what is going on yeah. here? What kind of weird vortex am I in here?" That was Jen the... and I went to visit my sister in Oskaloosa, Iowa. Whoa! And she had to go get some. She's like, "Oh, let's just go to the Walmart." And Jen and I were bracing ourselves. We're like, oh, yeah, here we go. I don't, I don't want to go to Walmart, but okay. And we went in there and yeah, it was like, holy cow, this is nice. <laughs> like, this place. It's like, man, you can get everything. Like you can get your haircut here. You can get eyeglasses. You can get, yeah, like, totally. You can get, they have everything and it Dang. is really nice. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like a Fred Meyer, but like better. Like uh, they have like these super yeah. Walmarts. What, what's going on here? Yeah. It was crazy. We couldn't believe that that was a Walmart. Like we, we went back there three or four times just on that trip with my sister. Cause we couldn't believe it. They still have these, uh, certain Walmarts. Like, uh, there's one probably about, I don't know, 15 minutes away from me where yeah. they, they're like, uh, I go, Hey, uh, I can't, do you guys have a basket? I can't find a basket. They're like, we don't have baskets here. I'm like, Oh, and then I go to like North Scottsdale and they're like, would you like a basket? sir?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so there's still like, you know, some uh, differences in like the areas of uh, where you're going to Walmarts, but yeah. yeah. Um, So Kevin and I, back in the day, we used to, you know, do a little side gigging and uh, we we started DJing weddings Mm -hmm. and we actually did your wedding, which was honestly one of the most memorable that I actually did uh, because first off... (laughs) And just to describe this, just to paint a picture, like as mentioned before, you know, half your family are like, you know, Mormon and half, yeah, my of, half. yeah and, and Jen's is not Mormon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys, I think you guys like decided, yeah, let's just have a dry wedding, right? Like, you know, the people on the, this side, they could deal with it or whatever. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll piece the, uh, we'll piece everybody. It's, it's fine. Right. So the drinkers are like, where's the fucking booze? <laughs> <laughs> and then like someone like there was like a, a shack down by like the the water and like they're like that's where the alcohol is and i'm like was that <laughs> was that her grandma or wait what was that what, what? <laughs> yeah it probably was her grandma was, was telling like, everyone was like, where did, the booze was down was, at the boat house was that someone's grandma that just said the liquor is down by the water <laughs> yeah, that was jennifer's grandma <laughs> That's yeah. great. Is she still around or is she no she she's died she was oh. uh at that point, she was. She was. A, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, eighty-five. So she died at. She died at ninety-nine. I mean, she. Oh. She lived a full life. Oh, she so died. she. Oh, she died at age ninety-nine. Age ninety-nine. Wow. Yeah. Uh, which was. Fucking hell of a run. That would have been in. Twenty sixteen, I guess. And so. and by the way, it's not like she was, you know, just a regular old lady. She was like, she was moving along like crazy. Oh, yeah like fixing meals and blah, 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 running around. I'm like, whoa, how old is she? Well, she cooked, she cooked all the food for our wedding. Jesus. She, she basically catered our wedding. Dude. And was it nuts. was at her house because it was, she had, you know, three acres on the water. 
And so wow. we had the wedding at her house. That is wild. And yeah, she, I mean, she did a ton of work for that. That was really cool. Cause like you had the two houses was it like, right. You had the, and then you had the, the wedding, like basically on the water. It, it's yeah. hard to describe. So like you, you basically you had the, it was overlooking. What is it? Port. It was overlooking Liberty Bay. In oh, Falls okay. Bay. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. it's very awesome. Like, I mean, just out looking the water right on, it's like, it looks like a movie. Like when you're like, yeah. see those movie weddings, you know, and it's really super cool. But one of the best parts of this was like, you had me DJ. I would always come to the bride and groom and Hey, look, what do you guys want me to do? What do you guys want me to play? How do you guys want me to do this? And <laughs> you remember the song that you had me <laughs> play when you guys walked out to introduce you as Mr. and Mrs. Frank Ricks? Oh, I'm trying to remember. I Dude, it was so great. Like, this was not my idea. This was your guys' idea. And I'll go, I kept asking, I'm like, I mean, is this going to be cool? Like, with, like, everybody here? And they're like, oh, yeah. It's, like, awesome. I'm like, all right. So I queued it up. And then, like, I go, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Brian Crooks. And it goes, do 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 and it went bats of dust, and I was like, "That's pretty awesome, man." (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was great. And then, and then, and then, you guys at the so at the very end, what you guys are gonna you guys are gonna make a a grand exit uh, after getting uh, married, right? Because you guys were gonna basically drift off into the uh, into the distance on a boat. Yep. To Seattle, somewhere. Where where were you guys staying? Yeah, we, we were staying at the Edgewater in yes. Seattle, so we took a boat, yeah. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> when you guys are drifting off, you guys, I don't know, this could have been your idea again, but you're drifting off, and I'm blasting uh, the Love Boat theme song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you guys, like, something was going wrong, where, like, you like you weren't going, like, right away, I was like, oh, crap, so I'm like, well, time to start it over, so I just played it again, and you guys, like, are drifting off, like, you know, because yeah. it's like a one-minute song or something like that. I think I had to restart the motor or something. <laughs> boat died or something <laughs> oh it was awesome awesome so I, I i always like talk about that wedding i love that wedding uh there's another one where i i did a uh, a wedding for my uh our buddy dave dave gretzky and uh yeah. he had this uh this old uh pickup and it and it looked like the sanford sun pickup so yep. <laughs> so he did the same he did kind of like the same thing but it was with the sanford and sun theme theme song yeah. So like I was like, this, this, my friends are freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just had a couple of quick questions here for you, and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap this all up here. So, Brian, you are actually a big Packers fan. Are you still a big Packers fan? I am. I uh, the Seahawks have supplanted the Packers as my favorite team at this point. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, now. Well, well, they finally ba- got there. Well, okay. Well, backing up, I know. See, in Seattle, it's hard to describe to people. In Seattle, in like the '90s, the owners, the coach, nobody gave a shit about the Seahawks. So it was hard as a fan to be a Seahawks fan, yeah. and you had to be a, like a fucking hardcore Seahawks fan to like, yeah, I'm watching the Seahawks. And like, you'd even had to try to find the Seahawks. Like, they would be blacked out half the time. So I'm like, I this is like the hardest team to be a fan of here. Like, they're literally blacking out games in the city where we're trying to watch the team. So it, it was hard. But who is your favorite Packers player of all time? Oh, favorite Packer player of all time. I, you know, I love Don Mikowski. Ooh, the magic man. Magic man. Yeah. Well, I remember watching yeah. him when I was a kid. And what about Sterling Sharp? I love Sterling Sharp, too. Yeah. That's I, a good era. Uh, I mean, and I, I'll claim Reggie White. You know, I love watching Reggie yeah. White in a Packers uniform. I mean, I the, know we uh, didn't start there, but what do they call him? The um, the Reverend, right? The Reverend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Reverend. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, now who is a better quarterback? Who will go down as a better quarterback? Brett Favre or Aaron <laughs> Rodgers? <laughs> oh, jeez. You throw a Bart Star in there. Too. You have to give it to Favre. I I Favre, think unless the old gunslinger picks up. A couple more championships, which he could this year, but a couple more. How many did Favre have? Well, Favre didn't have as many, but Favre was more legendary. I think Favre was. Well, he was the big, just he was the gunslinger. He, he was personality. <laughs> I mean, is the personality and just everything with Favre. I used to listen to this radio show, and they used to call him. They're like, he's a big dumb hillbilly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he yeah. had a great. He had a great arm, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Madonna. <laughs> All right. So, 
I, you know, I used to love uh, driving around with you, Brian, because uh, you were, see, now Lee is a lot harder to please in the music department. He's very yeah. snobby. You know, he hates about 50% of music. So yeah. now you, you were like very open to music. You're like, hey, you know what? I like 80s Madonna. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I like 80s, 80s Madonna too. I, I, I yeah. I, so what's your, uh, what's your favorite Madonna song? Oh, jeez. It's got to be like, you know, Material Girl or Like a Virgin. <laughs> you know, one of those. Uh, maybe Vogue. I really like Vogue. <laughs> so uh, how did you, Brian, how did you <laughs> first get into liking Madonna so much? Like, I, it would be funny, like, we'd be, we'd be, on a, we'd be on a job site and we'd hear the big diesel truck coming up and they'd be like, we're living in a material world. And we're like, oh, there's Brian. <laughs> yeah. Well, my parents, my parents were young parents. So they were, you know, they were 20 when they had me or 21. Yeah. And I think it was my mom that listened to Madonna in Chicago. Oh, good old you know, Chicago. Of course, like, of course, being at home with my mom most of the time, you know, I got a yeah. lot of Madonna and they right. had, uh, you know, Madonna records. And I, sure. when I learned how to play that record player, I played the Madonna record over and over and over. And, uh, you know, I have, uh, I have Madonna's first three albums sitting on my wall over there on the 80s wall. You're going to have to check it out sometime. Yeah, so, I will. I will. <laughs> yeah, so I, I became a closet Madonna fan then. I really enjoyed Madonna in high school, especially her book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is I never, I don't think I've ever seen that book, but I've, I've heard about it. I remember when it I, came out. I tried to get a copy so bad. At the time, though, I couldn't afford it. That book was so expensive. <laughs> I couldn't afford it. And then the other thing, I couldn't keep it hidden from my parents. And so I knew they would just find it and take it away. So, so I never ended up getting one, but I think Kelly had one. <laughs> I remember right. How's Kelly doing these days? Uh, you know, I haven't seen Kelly for a long time. Oh. I think he's doing all right, but I, I haven't really kept in touch with him after he got married and moved away. Where did he move to? I think he, he moved back to Utah for a period. Oh, he's did he? Washington now. Oh, wow. But yeah, he moved to Utah for a while and then yeah, we kind of lost touch then. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, uh well, just to come full circle and close this thing out here, um Brian, who is your longest tenured employee besides yourself, of course, at BC Pavers? Oh, that would be Lee. Lee Olson. Olson. The famous yeah. Lee Olson. Yeah. The the guy that's been a guest more than anybody else on my show. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He just, he kept coming back. Well, I so. just want to say that if it weren't for Kevin meeting me and bringing me to you, Lee would have never met you and yeah. become your longest tenured employee. So you're welcome. Yeah. yeah. You well, are welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's great. I love having him. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, Brian, I do want to thank you for being on the show. Uh, I always want to thank you for all the work that you provided over the years uh, for me and the rest of the guys. <laughs> I mean, there's some lean times there. Where you're like, uh, uh, yeah. you want to wash my truck? I'm like, oh man, this is getting bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean, like, I mean, my truck needs to be washed. I'm like, oh god, okay. <laughs> who'd, have thought in, who'd have thought in 2020 we'd be more stable than Boeing? Right. <laughs> Well, Brian, I know that Phoenix is not necessarily your favorite place to go, but uh, you know it's uh, it's come a long way. I'm here. You could come visit sometime if you if you are driving through, uh, going to, uh, you know, in all all reality here, I'll probably just be seeing you for the next Zoom party for fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good too. Yes, so. yes. So say hi to Jen for me. I haven't I haven't seen Jen in well, I guess since the uh, the football game here. It was yeah. good to see you guys. And anybody uh, in the Seattle area looking to install any pavers or retaining walls, I strongly encourage you to go to bcpaversinc.com and check it out. Did I get the uh, website right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That is right. Fantastic. All right, Brian. Well, any shout outs you want to give or anything like that? Uh, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian. Well, thanks again. And, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, Josh. Thanks Later, for man. having me. Have a good one. All right, you too. All right. Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends podcast. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, 
please make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow the show. And check out some of the video clips posted on YouTube and Facebook. I'm Josh, and thank you for being a friend.